في مقابلة مع الشرق قال محلل تصنيفات المؤسسات المالية لدى وكالة اس ان بي جلوبل محمد دمق قال إن السعودية والإمارات ستقودان نشاط إصدار الصكوك المستدامة في أسواق التمويل الإسلامي الرئيسية على المدى المتوسط مضيفا أن أثر الحرب الدائرة في غزة على بنوك المنطقة سيكون محدودا ومتوقعا استمرار الأداء الجيد في القطاع خلال العام المقبل and Islamic issuance in the core Islamic finance countries mm -hmm. were at around 22 billion year to date uh, until the end of September. And again, we think that this will continue to grow. I think if you look at the geographical distribution of the sustainable Sukuk issuance, uh, two countries stand up. Uh, these are Saudi Arabia and the UAE. And we think that these two countries will continue to drive uh, a significant portion of the issuance going forward. Our base case scenario, no, there would be no impact for the banks in the region um, and because we, uh, in our base case scenario, we think that the conflict will remain contained to Israel and Gaza and potentially, uh, for, in terms of economic impact, potentially Egypt and Jordan as well. But uh, in terms of the overall impact on the banking system in the region, we think it's, uh, it, it's, it's going to be contained. But uh, given the fact that investors are asking this question, We conducted a stress test to look at the potential implication of external funding outflows on the banking system in the region. And we came to the conclusion that most of the banking system are, can, on a standalone basis, without government support, they can handle even an extreme stress scenario of outflow that we outlined in our uh, research in terms of outflow of external funding, for example, Uh, we assume that 50% of the interbank, foreign interbank deposits will exit the system, which is a quite conservative assumption. We assume that 30% of the foreign depositors will exit the system. Again, a quite conservative assumption. And on the asset side, we looked at the different assets in order to determine um, uh, whether a bank would be able to liquidate these assets. For example, for the loans abroad, We assume that the banks won't be able to liquidate the asset because you have to stick to the, uh, to the repayment schedule of the loan and you cannot ask your client to pay you back immediately. But the banks have other liquid assets like cash, like deposits with the bank, like their investment portfolio. So when we subjected these assets to some haircut, the bottom line is that um, all the system in the GCC with the exception of Qatar came at a surplus position, meaning that they have more external assets to finance the outflow of external liability. Qatar is the exception, and that's because of the high external debt of the system, but still the position is fairly manageable for the banking system and for the sovereign. If you subject Egypt to the same assumption of the stress test, they would come at the, at, at the deficit as well, and that's again related to the buildup of the external debt of the last uh, couple of years. If you look at the results, I mean, the results have been improving for the majority of the banks uh, in the region. In our base case uh, expectation, we think that 2024, we think that it will continue, uh, assuming that the economy continues also to do well and that we don't have any other external shock either related to geopolitics or related to, uh, to, to oil price. We think that the, performance, the good performance will continue.